The night of April 13th, Marilyn Lovell and her daughters returned home from Mission Control, where just minutes earlier they'd watched Jim and his crew on TV from outer space. Friends dropped in, astronaut Pete Conrad and his wife. And the phone rang. It was another friend who worked for NASA. And he said, oh, Marilyn, I just want you to know that uh, all these different countries have offered to help, you know, in the recovery and whatever. I couldn't understand what he was talking about. And I said, Jerry, I said, have you been drinking? She no sooner hung up than another phone, a direct line to NASA, started ringing. And immediately Pete came out, and I can still see him standing across the room from me with eyes as large as saucers. And he said, Marilyn, we have to talk. He filled her in. They turned on the TV. Apollo 13, once the forgotten China, moon flight, was suddenly NBC the News. biggest story on Earth. Apollo 13, its power source is badly damaged, its mission to the moon ended, its astronauts under a strain more severe than any others have yet endured. The, the ship was oxygen, crippled, leaking oxygen, the mission to the moon over. The three astronauts, one of them her husband, were probably doomed. I just couldn't believe what I was hearing, and at that moment the house was just filling with people. People didn't know what to say to me. Best friends, they couldn't say anything. And says Jim Lovell, he and Mission Control were not sure what to say to each other either. Well, from an emotional point of view, Matt, first of all, they didn't want to say to us, you have a real problem here. And we didn't want to say to them, I think we got a real problem. I mean, we knew that. But is that just the bravado of a test pilot and astronaut? No, it's, I, I think it's the case, hey, we're beyond that now. We have, a, we have a problem. How do we get out of this problem? What, what do we do? We don't know yet or just what the steps are to do that. But Gene Krantz knew they all had to start making some decisions, and fast. I was a fighter pilot. Fighter pilots in my time used the words looking into the eye of a tiger. And this was the feeling I had when I recognized we were in survival mode and we had to kick in and get going as a team to help this crew out. The first problem, oxygen. The command module was going to run out in a matter of minutes. They had to figure out a way to save Lovell, Hayes, and Swigert fast. The only option was one they'd played out in simulations, but never expected to do. Now they start looking at the lunar module. Did you ever think you'd have to use that module as a lifeboat? Never thought I'd have to use it as a lifeboat. The lunar module, the spidery looking craft they'd planned to land on the moon and then leave behind. It had its own supply of air, water, and battery power. The lunar module was so fragile, you could punch a hole through the skin in it. But we had to live off of it because it had oxygen. What the lunar module could not do was re-enter the Earth's atmosphere. It could not get them home. So even though the command module was crippled, they had to save whatever air and power it had left. The only thing in the command module was a little battery and a little oxygen tank for the final plunge through the Earth's atmosphere. Jack Swiker was the command module pilot. I said, Jack, you power down this command module, save what you can. We're going into the lunar module, power it up. and So basically, you're, you're, you're buying time. You're, you're stalling for time in that lunar module so you can get back to that command module for that precise moment you need it to get back into the Earth's atmosphere. That's right. The command module was the only thing that had a heat shield. One hour now into the crisis, it was a race. Power down the command module before its batteries ran out. Power up the lunar module before oxygen ran out. They'd all trained for years, but never for this. I knew the command module had only so much life left, and we, we very quickly had to get to a point in the startup of the lunar module before the command module completely died. The command module's computers contained critical data the crew had to transfer to the LEMS computers, fast. And they had to do it the old-fashioned way. So when people look at their BlackBerry today or their iPhone, they're holding something in their hand that has far more computing capabilities than the spacecraft you were flying in outer space with. Oh, yes. Jack Swiger called me all the numbers, and I wrote them down, and then we had a, a conversion table for the lunar module, and I did the arithmetic to get the new numbers, and then I called Mission Control. I said, would you check my, uh, my uh, arithmetic for me, please, to make sure I'm not making a mistake? You're afraid to make a mistake here, because well, a mistake gonna, will cost you your life. That's right. I'm using all the assets I have, and that included the control center. They got into the lunar module with moments to spare, but now another decision loomed how to get back to Earth. 
I had a very fundamental decision I had to make. Uh, we could execute what we call a direct abort and come around the front side of the moon and be home in a day and a half. It was the quickest way home, but it would mean using the main engine, the one nearest the explosion. What if that engine failed or blew up as well? If this maneuver isn't executed perfectly, you're going to impact the moon. If the spacecraft would actually go right into the surface of the moon? Yeah. Yeah. Kranz didn't want to take the risk. The other option, I'd have to go completely around the moon, take between four and five days to get back home. The problem with that was obvious to the astronauts themselves. When we started going to the lunar module, I realized it was designed for two guys for two days. And I counted the crew, one, two, three guys for four days. Simple arithmetic that meant they could run out of air, power, and water long before reaching Earth. In the end, it was the flight director's decision. And it was purely in a gut feeling that says, go around the moon, take your chances, trust your team to find the answers. In other words, take the long way home and risk losing their crew in space. <laughs>